from my son saying to me that he knew I would understand about his addiction better. He goes, he goes then than some of the rest of the family. He's like, uh, Dad, he said, for instance, why would Dad ever need drugs? I mean, he doesn't even... He doesn't even feel things at all the way I do. He doesn't love love the way that I do. He doesn't he doesn't hurt the way that I do. He knew this, you know, as a 15, 16 year old, he knew that. Um, so he did have a lot of shame wrapped up in his. I mean, at that moment, saying something like that, it sounds like he has a really good grasp on that. It's not a moral failing. It's not a. Um, it doesn't mean that he's just a wimp because he can't kick it or you know. But he didn't. He was super ashamed of it. And this twelve-step programs that you know, programs that are based the treatment centers, um, and the the AA and all that. They are they are saying to addicts that they expect that they're going to just tough it out, that they're just going to, you know, uh, willpower it out. Well, that's not going to happen. That is going to be a failure every time. And so that's just a way of, you know, reconfirming that you're a failure, that you're a loser, that you're weak, that you, you know. And that's all just really, really, really bad, bad messages. And ego, because also the, another big component of the, of, the, of the AA philosophies and all that is that it's total abstinence forever that is way too much for a 20 year old kid to be talk to be thinking about it's way too much for anybody to be thinking about but but for a 20 year old kid what that means is i'm never gonna have fun again because in in my son's mind you know a month was a long amount of time you know that was like forever long going to treatment or something for 30 days was like forever Whereas I knew it was just, you know, a drop in the bucket. But you talk about forever. You're t- telling a 20-year-old kid forever he can't drink. Which, you know, at this point, he, you know, he still hadn't had, he'd had, he'd seen a lot of things and he'd had, he'd gone through, you know, bad times and he'd had, he'd, he'd bottomed out and all that. But he hadn't, you know, by the time it's gone on for, you know, a lot of years, um, it stops being fun. But at 20 years old, his friends and stuff were still having fun with alcohol and drugs. I mean, it was still a fun thing. It was still something they did on a Saturday night for, you know, his friends still did on a Saturday night to have fun. Um, and part of the reason that he felt so isolated was that because he was an, an addict who had gone on to do harder drugs and to the point of losing everything and not be able to have a job and, you know, all that, that his friends weren't sensitive to the fact that they couldn't, even though his even though his friends didn't go to that point with it, that he wasn't going to be able to just drink a six pack, you know, a beer, without without potentially going, you know, and having a six pack of beer, um, and not stopping until he's overdosed on heroin. You know, that that's it. It, it re- that's not too far a stretch from really exactly what happened. Um, because it's how quickly it it escalated for him um and so you know he might have been the he might have been one of the ones that was you know really was going to have to just abstain forever but even if that was the case that's not the way you could ever look at it what he had to do was by choice tell himself i'm not going to use today i'm just i'm just not going to use today and because the other thing that would happen too with that is that he was a big one for, and a lot of addicts are what they call the buckets, which is, you know, um, if he had a beer, well, that's as good as just using. So fuck it. I'm just like, you know, I have you now. Now I might as well just go for it because I already screwed it up. You know, there, so there's just there's a lot of messages that can be really, tr- you know, tricky if you don't. You're just you're taking everyone in, giving everyone this one size fits all sort of philosophy, and you've got young immature kids like like him impulsive kids you know there might be someone who's you know 50 years old and they'll be able to know well no it's not that big of a deal that i had a beer i'm not going to go off and you know uh start smoking crack and you know just because i did had a beer you know they're going to know but um but for someone who's impulsive like my son who you know feels shame feels like you know all this stuff is bad, 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 because, you know, he, he never got any sort of, like, an, any sort of normal uh, socialization with anything, with, the, with any kind of substances. You know, I think maybe if I could have gotten him to, you know, 
not think so much about that it has to be forever. That we're just like for right now, you're not going to do heroin, you know? How about we'll just stick with that? Like today, I'm not going to do heroin, you know? Yeah, you know, and maybe we could work on today, I'm not going to get drunk. But that would be the next stage. But one thing I, I, that is for sure is that I think looking into some alternative treatments would have been different. And the music, of course, was the big saving, was the big thing. And I was counting on saving him. You really have to have an advocate. If you are, if you, if you have someone in your life that is an addict, or if you yourself are an addict, you really need to get someone on your side because if you, because you need someone fighting for you. And, um, and someone really helping you out and supporting you. And, um, you know, I mean, I wasn't able to ultimately save my son, but um, I can't imagine how awful it would have been if he hadn't had me. And, and, he, and he would have just, he would have been gone a lot sooner, that's for sure. And, um, and the last part of his life, you know, would have been pretty, pretty awful. He, he would, you know, because the thing of it is, is that his, it wasn't, the last part of his life wasn't that awful. I mean, the last time we saw him was, we had a wonderful time together. And, and we had some, we had some great, great moments sort of woven into, woven into this period. And like I said, he was, he was sober half the time. He was just in treatment when he was sober. It, treatment, drug treatment is expensive and it's not that successful. It is the only thing to do at this point. I mean, there isn't really, there isn't really anything else to do, especially if you're young, you know, if you, the biggest thing is going to be once a person's made a decision that they're just, that they're just done, they've had enough, then they're going to be able to figure out, they're going to be able to make it work, you know, with, with an online program at home program or but if you are just a young person and you don't have you know you just you're just needing some help and stuff like that really the the only really built-in thing to do is to go to a traditional treatment program and then come out and, and go to you know find a 20 12 step group and get a sponsor and go in and handle it that way because it's free and um you know, there's nothing else that's going to be like that. And, and so, and, and even, like I said, even, even paid treatments lead in that direction. So of course, the best thing of all is to replace that addiction with a passion, with something that you care so much about that that's going to drive you. And that's going to be what saves you. And of course, for me, my children saved me and for my son i was hoping and counting on it being his music that saved him and you know if he could have sunk his teeth into that and i think he was that was about to happen if he'd had a little bit more time to get a little bit more grounded and you know get into the music community more so that he was starting to materialize more that would have happened but you know when the drug that he was doing was just so so deadly that um you know it was just a ticking time bomb